So in our first example, oh, we're going to do a line plot of all that all that uh, sales data, um, and there it is. There's the code for it, apart from the import and the you know the ch changing the dates into uh, date time. And you'll see it's really quite familiar. Okay, so the only the only two things that you need to know is now that we're doing plt plot that gives us the the line plot, and I'm here I'm specifying the line width to be 0.5. We can obviously make it thicker or thinner. Um, we'll use I'm using 0.5 because that's going to be helpful in another example later. Um, then we do uh, same stuff as we've done before, so the X label, the Y label, uh, the title. If you're doing something like this, though, um, the, what makes this easier to distinguish is that every line is, is colored. So, but in order to tell which is which, we need to tell the viewer which color is represents which product. So that's what the legend is for. Um, we do a, a legend of the of the data columns, uh, okay, which is the product name, so A, B, C, D, E, uh, and location to uh, um, that just puts it to the left, uh, top left. Uh, there's other locations you can have it, but that seems to be quite a nice one for these uh, these charts. Um, okay, well that's so far so good, but there's there's far too much information there. We can't really make out what's going on at the bottom. We can see the top selling products at the top, but we can't really make out what's going on at the bottom. So uh, first thing to do is uh, segment the data, just like we did last week. And uh, last week we we identified products A, F, and L as being the high volume ones. Uh, and we can also work this out by sorting the data, or we can do a uh, we can do a selection by value. Um, okay, so that sorts them, um, and we can even just print out the, the sum of the first few columns. We could, we can do various ways of segmenting. We, the, the the stuff we did on proportion last week was very useful, but actually you, you could simplify that if you don't want to uh, don't want to do some bar charts. So let's first look at these very high volume columns. So that's, uh, again, going to be very, very straightforward to do. So we just select uh, some of the columns with our list of selected columns, which just is, just like we did last week. And then we can print those the, the head of those columns if we want to, to check. And then all we need to do to change the plotting code is just to change um, the data to data bracket selected. And that will then pick out those three columns. Uh, we can also. Uh, well, we should also remember to change the, the chart title. Uh, and then from that figure, what can we see? Well, it looks from that figure that the A and F are the really big sellers. Those are the blue and the orange ones. You can't quite see that on my slide, but uh, you can see the green one is, is much lower than the others. And L only sells about half as much as the others, you'd say, from that, wouldn't you? Well, no, that's not, that's not correct. And if you remember the picture before, that's not correct. The, the fact is that the x-axis, so this, if you look at the bottom of this, um, of this x-axis, sorry, the y-axis, my apologies, the bottom of the y-axis looks like it starts around 280. It's hard to make out, but the bottom figure I can see there, uh, if you can read it, the bottom figure is 300. So that looks where the x-axis starts is about 280, which means that we're missing off a whole chunk of the chart. Okay. The reason that happens is that matplotlib is trying to fit everything nicely. So to show as much of the data as possible, matplotlib tries to fit it all into the, the picture without too much white space. Um, but that's very misleading. Okay, so it looks like L is doing not nearly as well as the others, but actually that's not true. <laughs> um, and because it, it can be misleading, this is a trick employed by salespeople and politicians. They, not always, uh, not consistently, but sometimes they, they they start. If you start the chart, the bottom of the chart, in the, in the wrong place or a misleading place, you can give a very misleading picture of, from the of the uh, data. So if we correct that uh, by just all we need to do is set the y limit, the the minimum value of y to zero. Okay, so that line in bold uh, it, it here sets the y value to zero. And now it's a much more accurate picture in terms of it's not or much mess, much less misleading. Uh, you can see that L is okay, it's not as high volume as the other two, but it's still relatively high, it's still sort of maybe, so maybe 80% of their sales in L as opposed to 
what it looked like before, which is about half. So um, it's a very good idea to, uh, to in fact, it's a, it's a guideline, and I'll talk about it at the end, to make sure that that um, Y limit is set correctly so that it's not a misleading figure. Unless you've got to the point where you've explained that in your uh, visualizations and you're then trying to explore in a bit more detail, then it's acceptable. But really, if you're doing the first visualization like that, it should start at zero. Okay, I'm going to finish that video here and then we'll move on to look at some, some uh, simplifications of that data.